let's look at some notation. The probability of an event A is that, P of A, as pronounced. Pronounced P of A, or the probability of A. And uh, if you've taken, you know, a college algebra class or something, this is similar notation to the whole f of x. It's the same kind of idea. Probability is, is essentially a function that tells us the probability for a given input, in this case, the, uh, the event. But p of a, we look at an event, and we want to know what's the probability of that event occurring. Well, we have a few um, basic ways of calculating probabilities. Um, so we can say the probability of an event, we can say it's the number of ways, um, number of ways that A could occur. Divided by the number of different simple events. And we can call this uh, S over N. Now the S typically stands for um, the uh, number of successful ways. Number of successful outcomes. It's usually why we use S for successes. And then n, of course, n is sample size. We used that uh, in the last chapter. For sample size, well, the sample space, sample size, n is the size of the sample space. There you go. So consistent terminology there. This is referred to as the classic, classical approach. And it relies on, um, this only works, if all um, simple events have equal chances. So, for example, um, if I was doing, you know, uh, rolling a six-sided die, Let's say we roll it twice, and we want to know what's the probability of um, total of three. Well, the number of ways I could get um, a total of three, that event, the simple events that would make that up is I could roll a two, then one, or a one and then two. They're the only two ways that I can get a total of three out of two rolls of this six-sided die. And then we would have to know the total number of different simple events. Well, we could have a one and then a one. We could roll a one and then a two. We could roll a one and then a three, a one and a four, one and a five, or a one and a six. Or our first roll could be a two. We could roll two, one, two, 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 three, and so on. Um, we actually end up with 36 different possibilities here. 6, 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, and finally 6, 6. And only two of these possibilities, two of these simple events, have the final event of total of 3 out of the 36 different possibilities. So probability of getting a total of 3 is 2 out of 36. Now I got six, 36 because there's six combinations, six simple events that start with a roll of 1. There's six simple events that start with a roll of 2. There's six that start with a roll of 3 and so on up till six that start with a roll of 6. And 6 times 6 is 36. So 
we can reduce this fraction to 1 over 18. And that is our classical approach to computing this probability. But it does rely on all simple events having equal chances. And that is important. Uh, that's not always the case. Sometimes we look at different things and maybe one occurrence is, is more likely, one, one outcome, one event is more likely to occur than some of the other ones. And that's going to mess things up, makes things more complicated. We also have kind of the uh, relative frequency approach or approximation. And it's, it's similar. Basically, we, we compute the probability of something by looking at how many times we actually observed it. So we observe a procedure. Uh, many times. And then P of A we take, and really it's an approximation, and we say the number of times A actually occurred. We divide that by uh, the total number of times the procedure was repeated. It was done. Right? So an example of this might be something like um, a uh, basketball player. has uh, attempted one hundred and thirty seven shots this season and made uh, fifty seven of the shots and so then we could say the probability of um, a successful shot for this player is approximately 57 over 137. A successful shot, we observe that occurring 57 times out of 137 procedures. The procedure is shooting the basketball. And so what this means is we can now estimate, if he takes another shot, we can estimate what his what the probability of success will be. And so we get our calculator and we say what's 57 divided by 137 and that is uh, 0.416. We say it's approximately 0.416. That's its probability. Well up here with this I'm getting a total of 3, that 1 18th I could have put that as a uh, as a decimal as well. Could have said 1 divided by 18 was 0 0.055555 Zero five five six whatever. So we can approximate our, our probabilities as decimals or as, as fractions. Um, but this one with rolling six out of die, we know that one. That's you know this is not this is a, the probability is one eighteenth. Assuming these are six sided fair dice, they're you know equally weighted. That probability is exactly one eighteenth. Um, the basketball player. This is an estimation. We can't look at the total number of, um, you know, we can't really follow the classical approach to this probability for this basketball player. It's just not really going to work that way. The number of ways it could occur, I mean, there's an infinite, you know, number of ways that the, the ball can pass through, you know, the air, slightly different arcs, slightly different rotations, slightly different angles, which it leaves his hand and all these things. Um, we, we can't calculate all those different possible trajectories that would that would cause the ball to leave his hand and successfully pass through the, the basketball goal. So we can't calculate those things. All we can really do in that situation is do this relative frequency approximation. Okay, and then um, a third type of, of really roughly estimating probability is subjective probabilities. <clears throat> 